And uh, I was so thrilled to see all of that and to hear of his experiences that I thought before he goes back this coming Monday to begin his school year, we could have the joy of benefiting also from what he has to share. So let us give a warm rotary welcome to James Roldan. Dank. Hello, Rotary Club of Boca Raton. How are you today? Yeah, great. <laughs> Thank you so much for inviting me. And that what you just heard was the performance I did for Chancellor Angela Merkel and Ambassador Emerson in Berlin one year ago. So it's an honor and privilege to be here. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Lira, for inviting me personally. He's a great friend of mine and my family, my mom and my dad, they're here today. And yeah, just, just thank you so much for letting me share the story of my one year abroad and how I got to that position. Uh, so it's an honor and a privilege to be here. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so my story of traveling one year abroad in Germany actually started off as an unlikely one. I was a senior back in high school. I was taking all these AP classes, trying to get my GPA up, uh, applying to colleges, and I was having this really hectic hectic uh, lifestyle schedule, and the person who told me about the program was my sister, actually. Uh, she told me about the Congress Bundestag Youth Exchange Program, known as CBYX. And what it is, it's uh, sponsored by both the American and the German governments, and it only exists between those two countries. No other countries have that in common. And uh, there are three main components of it. Uh, number one, that you live one year abroad with a host family. Number two, you go to the school there uh, as a native. And number three, you attend meetings with government officials throughout the year. So both from your host country and from your home country. So one would think that, you know, me coming from a Chilean father, Brazilian mother, you know, multicultural background, speaking three languages around the dinner table, that I'd be all in. Yeah, this is for me. But, you know, given the hectic lifestyle that I was living <laughs> and the schedules, I really thought that this, you know, I just didn't want to waste my time with that. I thought that would be a waste of a year. So I unfortunately let the deadline pass to apply. I know. Um, and then my sister calls. She was at, at, in Philadelphia. And she calls and says, uh, two days later after the deadline, she says, hey, James, how's it going? How's the the application process for applying for that exchange year, you know it's great. If there's anything I can do to help, I'm here for you, man. I got you covered. And then for some reason, I was there on the phone, sitting in front of the computer screen, and I typed the uh, website from the program. And when I clicked on the link, the first thing I see in bright, big red, all caps letters, application deadline extended, two weeks, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. So there I am on the phone still, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, things are doing great. Right. A little slow, right? A little slow. I haven't done much, but slow and steady wins the race, and I'll have something done in time for the deadline. So um, I hung up, and I actually was in the middle of the application process where I actually learned to appreciate what the program had to offer, and I thought, you know, this is for me. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, then it wasn't meant to be. And long story short, I got in, graduated from high school, and I was on a plane headed to Washington, D.C., where I'd meet the other student ambassadors. And we were there in D.C. for three days. Um, and one of the highlights of being there was I got to meet our representative, Congresswoman Lois Frankel. Um, and I had a good time. She was very nice just to talk about some of the concerns I had about our nation's politics and just really soaking in what it meant to be a student ambassador headed to Germany. So with her blessing, I went forth across the seas and uh, with the other student ambassadors to Germany, where we went for our first three weeks uh, to an intense language camp, where we learned the German language and culture in a crash course. You know, they hammered that to us. And this was all done in a German castle, by the way, that they renovated and they made it into a school. And it was really nice. We got to use all their facilities. And that was 
that was a really nice welcome, and that was all in the middle of Germany, but also in the middle of nowhere. They just forgot to mention that last part. But it's cool, you know, it was nice. And the three weeks were done in a blink of an eye. I was finally able to meet my host family, and uh, we moved to Warburg, Germany. That's a small town of 12,000 people. That would be my new German home. It's uh, half an hour away from the castle. And uh, it, Barberg, the thing that was so special about Barberg is because I'm a history geek, and when I immediately saw it, it's a medieval town. Everything's decked out medieval. They even have these towers everywhere, this uh, nice city gate, city walls. It was beautiful. It was the best place. I, I can't, like, I don't know. I, there are no words to describe it, right? <laughs> and it Things were doing fine. I was uh, integrating. I was going to school and not being late. Very German attributes, right? <laughs> and things were perfect. And but then it hit me that I didn't just want to be, uh, you know, an another student ambassador that just came in and went out every year. I just wanted to make a lasting impact to the community and give back to them. And that's when it occurred that I was going to do a rap music video as a tribute to Varberg. So I, I gathered all my resources up, right? I, I, I got the mayor on board with this. I got uh, teachers, students, young and old, everybody rallied behind this music video. Because one of the things I noticed was that the people of Varberg, they weren't really proud to be citizens of that town. Because they said, oh yeah, we're a small town. We don't have much to offer. You know, especially for the young generation. Or, you know, all the tourists go to the south. They all go to Bavaria, Neuschweinstein, or whatever. And so that means we're probably not that special. And I felt really sad when I heard these comments because it is such a beautiful town and the people are so nice. So I wanted that to change. I wanted to, to start a Barberg revolution where people uh, felt that they were happy to be there. And I wanted to expose that to the world, not only uh, Germany or the US. Through the internet, you can reach literally anyone across the globe. And so I wanted to also show uh, what was, for me as an American student, special, what was interesting, funny, sometimes kind of weird, uh, <laughs> about uh, living in Germany. And I also wanted to showcase the beautiful and unique aspects of the town. And that was in the winter, uh, during winter break, so my sister was able to fly up and she did the chorus part to my rap. <laughs> and that was two months of intense video editing, video filming, planning. The weather certainly did not help whatsoever. And uh, it was finally done, and I'll just show you so you guys could see for yourself. <laughs> minutes this uh, video became a YouTube sensation in Varberg. It was the <laughs> number one hit in all the Varberg records, right? And so the very next day both the green and the red newspapers came over to seek interviews. Even the uh, newspaper from the big city nearby, 30 Minutes White Castle, I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with the German geography, but uh, they came by and uh, sought an interview. And it also aired on uh, German television, national German television, Bede Air, Best Deutsche Radio Station. And that was totally unexpected. And that just gave me a platform, really, to just share my uh, experiences and my culture, my heritage as an American, especially even South Florida culture, to uh, especially the young ones. I went to the elementary schools and I just gave performances, I gave lectures, and it was a really fun time. I was given this uh, honorary celebrity status of the town <laughs> and uh, I'll take selfies with uh, many students there and even sign some autographs. <laughs> and it, it was an amazing uh, experience there. And that became the status quo of my exchange year until I get this other phone call. It's always about the phone calls. I don't know, for some reason, it, the phone calls are what change uh, the situations, right? So I get this phone call, and it's the German coordinator uh, from the exchange program. And she says, James, James, I have wonderful news. And I'm like, what is it? Tell me. <laughs> and then she says that someone from the German government saw my YouTube video, and they would like that um, if I would 
make a performance for the chancellor there in Berlin at the end of my exchange here. The ambassador is going to be there. Some of the uh, congressmen in Germany are going to be there as well. And also your peers, um, the student ambassadors are going to be there. They want you to do a performance because they thought your, your uh, album was a number one hit. <laughs> and um, so would you please do that? And I was shocked. I was like, oh my gosh. Uh, I can't think straight. <laughs> and I finally composed myself together. I had one month to put uh, something uh, about my experiences and something that really reflected the experiences of all the student ambassadors across the board. And that's where I did that three minute uh, Broadway-esque type of musical for the Chancellor. And just a fun fact, while I was there in Germany, uh, in Berlin, uh, waiting to do the performance, I was backstage with the ambassador waiting for um, Miss Merkel and just to introduce myself. She finally came, I introduced myself, and I said that I was going to be the performer, right? And then she looks at me and says, Right, you're the rapper, right? <laughs> so I was like, yes, but today, no, but... <laughs> so if any of you guys see uh, Miss Merkel say that you know the rapper and that she's cool with that, you know, maybe she'll give you a free tour <laughs> of the place. But um, yeah, that just goes to show that a little bit of creativity and with a strong determination that can lead you to so many places and looking in retrospect of the success of my exchange year I can really attribute it to kind of um, in a way the Rotarian principle of giving to the community by giving to the community of Varberg I gained their trust their support and it took me to places that I never even imagined and I hope and pray that all of you guys can continue to spread that message. It's really true. It's not cliche. And um, I encourage you to, to keep doing that. So it was really relevant in my life, and I'm sure it will be to many people who you guys will inspire. So thank you very much. Uh, I will show a snippet of the performance I did for Chancellor Merkel, and then we could go to the Q&As. How about that, right? <laughs> Yes, I saw that hand up first. So what's next? <laughs> That's what I'm asking. <laughs> um, well, I guess my short-term goal is, uh, you know, getting through college, you know, education is important, and uh, I want to go to med school. That's, that's my short-term goal. Um, as Benjamin Franklin said, you know, education is the investment that pays the best interest. So I'm a, f a firm believer in that, and I hope that'll uh, bring me to the next platform where I can take my other skills that I've acquired and, and move it on to the next level. Yeah, yes. Two questions that you can ask. Okay. Well, both out there. One is, uh, can you tell us, you must have a performing arts background, can you tell us about that? And number two, uh, how difficult was it to adjust to the language to jump in like that? Okay, so to answer the first question, um, it all started in, in school, uh, actually freshman year of high school, uh, with the school musicals at Westminster Academy. We have uh, magical performances as well, which is in December. It's like the old Renaissance uh, magical feast. And uh, actually, senior year, I was the king. That was my goal to always be the king, and I finally got that position. <laughs> And obviously for the musicals, you have to not only have the acting down pat, but you also have to train your, uh, yourself musically, your vocals. So my sister was the first person actually to bring me to that. And she was doing that way before I was doing it. But then I started going to her, uh, taking voice lessons, singing lessons, and uh, just learning and improving. You know, every time seeing what I could do differently and uh, just trying to get better every time. And for the language, yes, as you can see in my three-minute musical, that was one of the chief aspects that everyone, all the Americans felt was, was uh, really tough, especially the Dea Di Das, the articles, you know, the um, bus is masculine, but the car is neutral, and then you have to decline all of that. It was more like trial and error at first, you know, you just, just say something. And it was really tough because actually, the Germans speak fluent English, perfect. And when they see that you're an American, they want to practice English with you. Yeah. So it was really tough, you know, I had to just keep responding in German to practice, or else I would have never learned German. And I think it was after 
December and the beginning of January, that's when it like kind of clicked in. You know, it just clicked in, and then you learn exponentially from that. But the first months, it's brutal, and you just really feel like hopeless at times. But after that certain critical point, it's, it's smooth sailing from there. You said that the chancellor called you the rapper. Yeah. Would be expecting you to do that? Or yes, would... that is an interesting story. So, because someone saw the rap music video, um, they, I was communicating like through a person who communicated through the other person in the chancellery. So I, I thought I made it clear that I was going to make a Broadway-esque type of musical, but apparently that third party didn't say that to the people in the chancellery. So when I was escorting, uh, being escorted by the police, they were like, oh yeah, the hapa, the I'm that guy, I'm not. And then I was getting tired, whatever, so I went to the microphone check, right? And then uh, they told me to bring my CD, just in case, so then I brought my CD, the playback is there. It starts with that Frank Sinatra kind of jazz thing, you know? And then they look at me like, what's going on? He's the rapper, what's he doing? <laughs> something funny is going on. They thought I was up to something funny, so they made me sing it the whole way through, just to make sure that nothing funny was going down. And uh, they loved it, and then that whole thing with uh, uh, Miss Merkel uh, thinking, you know, saying that I was the rapper, that's when that happened afterwards. <laughs> that's, that's yeah, good job. Any other questions? One, one quick yes. question. I, I never asked you this, but were you also the author of the the rapper text? Yes, I was. And Fantastic. actually, if I don't know, like you probably know, well, no. uh, the song is kind of like a parody of Empire State oh, yeah, of Mind. Sure. Yeah. It's yeah. about New York City, you know. Yeah. Big city, and this one is about a town of twelve thousand people, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I took that. In the beginning with the black and white pictures, you kind of see that it's very, very similar to that rap uh, video, uh, music video. But then I make it my own, and yes, it was. Um, I just really wanted to reflect on my own point of view of what I thought was special, different, you know, sometimes funny, and what was unique about the town. I'd like to visit. Yeah, that, yeah it's beautiful. You know, there's so many. The good thing about Europe and Germany is that everything is so close by here. That if you're there four hours, you're already in Italy. Here, four hours, you're Orlando or something like that. <laughs> so it's very convenient. Yeah. Um, so why did you do the Broadway-esque uh, sort of thing except in, instead of the rap when you were alive? I don't know. Well, when I was trained uh, vocally, I actually was trained uh, with the classical opera actually styles of singing. So that's actually my main base and. When I was trained in that, my voice teacher said, from that, from singing opera and the Italian classics, you can do anything. You can do pop, jazz, uh, rap. And it just felt like it would be smoother to put like the whole experience of Germany in with several different songs, not just the same song all throughout. And, and it actually was for the best because I put a snippet of Don Giovanni's uh, Madalina. I don't know if you guys recognize that, but uh, Chancellor Merkel is really into opera. She's an uh, opera fanatic. And I saw, you know when she was grinning and like going like this? That was during that snippet of that song. So that was perfect for me. I only learned that afterwards. And so that was a good choice. <laughs> Great. Great job. Any other questions? Thank you guys. We actually have a little mug so you can drink more coffee. Sure. Uh, keep me awake for uh, the tests, definitely. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.